This is the Alcohol-Free Lifestyle Podcast, where you learn to live a life of health, wealth, love, and happiness. Welcome back to another episode of the Alcohol-Free Lifestyle Podcast. I'm your host and one of the coaches. My name is Terry Patterson, and I'm glad you're here. Today, we're going to talk about the holidays and how challenging it can feel if you're going through your first holiday season alcohol-free. So I have some tips, some tricks, some hacks, and some things to consider when it comes to the mindset of enjoying the holidays versus dreading the holidays. So first, it's really powerful to remind ourselves that the first time we do anything, it might be awkward or messy, and that's okay. It really is just the practice that we need. We need to get started and find our way through. And then each time we navigate a new social situation or the holidays roll around again, we'll have more practice and more brain power to move forward in this journey of living an alcohol-free lifestyle. So when it comes to the holidays, the first thing we really want to think about is mindset. I often hear people sharing their thoughts around navigating the holidays or getting through the holidays without alcohol. And if you could rewind the tape and listen to yourself, we often find that we are using language that really is negative and kind of negates the experience that we might have. For example, you may find yourself saying like, oh, I don't know how I'll get through the holidays without drinking. Or drinking is always a trigger for me around the holidays. And so, or holidays are always a trigger for my drinking. And so just I just invite you to explore that language because it's very powerful what we tell ourselves. You know, our brain only knows what we tell it. And so if we tell ourselves again and again that it's going to be a challenge, that you know, it's going to be very triggering to be around family or certain experiences or events without drinking, then guess what? That's what we're going to find. We're going to actually create our own reality. And so the first thing to do is just start to be aware of how are you imagining the holidays and what are you saying out loud and in your very powerful brain? One of the ways that we can do this is to write down what we're thinking and, you know, do a little journaling exercise so that you're actually getting those thoughts out on paper so that you have a clear understanding of what it is you are saying. I often catch people saying something that can set them up for the opposite outcome. You know, they're telling themselves what they don't want and they're not even aware of it. So assignment one is to simply bring some awareness to what you're saying and really ask yourself, am I focusing on all the things that could go wrong or am I focusing on all the things that can go right? You know, our brain is wired to notice where we put our attention energy flows. And so we have something called the reticular activating system. And this actually helps us hone in on the things that are important. It really helps us focus. And the more we think about something, the more we're going to see that show up in our world, experience that very thing. So I invite you to consider telling yourself that the holidays are going to be amazing. There's new adventure around every corner. It's going to be so much easier than I think. Not drinking is actually going to be my superpower. These are some of the things that I told myself when I had my first holiday season over nine years ago. So I want to talk specifically about some things that we can do, and I'm going to divide this into a few categories. So we're going to talk about planning ahead and then family, because we all know that wherever we go, there's people there, right? And we can't really escape our family during the holidays. And also for some of us, the hardest part of the holidays is being alone. So I want to give you some tips and tricks around experiencing a solo holiday. And then finally, if you are the host, 
this holiday season. Sometimes guests can be the hardest part of the holidays. And so let's talk about how we can set ourselves up for success and really crush the holidays alcohol-free and not only have a good time, but have an amazing time. So first, when it comes to planning ahead, I love to think about uh, you know, how we can enjoy the holidays uh, and really you know, experience them with just a little bit of planning. So if you are traveling somewhere for the holidays, there's a couple of things that can be really helpful. And one is this idea of going late and leaving early. So perhaps you're heading out of town for a three-day weekend and, you know, your family or friends want you there for an extended period of time. If you're feeling like that might be too long and that that particular event or family members might be challenging, then make your own plans so that you are able to be in control of when you arrive, where you stay, and for how long. You know, family can be well-meaning, but they can also be a little overwhelming in the beginning of our alcohol-free journey. So if you are visiting family or going to connect with family, you know, drive your own car, stay perhaps in your own hotel room, you know, do yourself a favor and, and plan ahead so that you have a way to leave and get some extra rest. Take a break when your nervous system feels a little overstimulated. And then once you have that dialed in, uh, you know, one of the things that I love to do when I go to holiday gatherings with family is hang out with the little ones. And this goes for whether you're joining family or friends. So if there are children there, you know, they are not drinking alcohol. <laughs> and so you can buddy up with some of the young um, members of the party and you can enjoy an activity that could look very different. Um, so find or share a new activity that has zero to do with drinking. This can be something you do with the whole group or just the children. Uh, so a scavenger hunt, making decorations for the table, uh, playing charades, play Never Have I Ever, the holiday edition. There's so many good ideas where we tend to think when we get up in our head and imagine what it's going to be like, that drinking is going to be the, the sole focus. But the truth is we're in charge of that. And we have so much opportunity to change that dynamic. So, you know, finding a new activity um, can really be fun. I personally love to make some decorations for the table, sometimes with kids, sometimes with adults, and just mix it up. And then the next idea is to plan an early morning activity. And so this is something that you love to do to make sure you're going to want to turn in early and wake up early. So perhaps it's a morning hike, a trip to a special bakery, or cooking breakfast for the gang. So plan something so that you are wired and your desire is to go to bed early and get up early. And that will really set you up for success when it comes to traveling away from home and perhaps you know connecting over an extended period of time with friends or family. And let's talk a little bit about family. So family, you know, those relatives, you know, the ones I mean, the ones that always seem to push our buttons by asking those invasive questions. So here's a few strategies for your first alcohol-free holiday. Or if you're like me, you might have somebody in your family who tends to quote unquote, forget that you're not drinking. And so you end up having the same conversation about why you're not drinking alcohol. So the one liner is a great strategy. And I wish I could guarantee that the subject of your of you without a glass in your hand is not going to come up, but it may. And so the best defense I've found is a good offense. So think about how you want to handle it if the situation comes up and choose how much you want to share. 
perhaps with your really good cousin friend, you know, that you close to, you might want to share a little bit more about your journey. But if it's that, you know, if it's someone's aunt's new boyfriend, perhaps you don't want to share. So you get to decide what your one liner is going to be. And it could be anything from, oh, I'm doing a health challenge. And so I'm not drinking right now. And remember, when you give that one liner, you do not have to follow up with all of your story and you can just simply change the subject. Uh, you know, how, how are things going for you? Um, what are you enjoying in your life these days? And so we can turn that spotlight away from us with a very simple one liner. Um, and just having an answer in your back pocket can go a long way to making you feel more comfortable. And then practice beforehand, you know, practice is really helpful and we can get to a place where we feel so much more um, willing to, you know, have that conversation when we've been practicing what to say. And so I'm suggesting that you play out this scenario in your brain so that you can tell your brain exactly what it's going to look like and how you're going to respond. And so imagine what you might do in a challenging situation. So let's say someone hands you a cocktail and asks you to taste test it, or someone asks you to open a bottle of wine for dinner. Even if you feel solid, visualizing the whole event ahead of time can make your first alcohol-free holiday so much easier. And then this one comes from, um, you might, um, you might, this might sound familiar, um, but I like to think of it as the escape hatch. So if things start to deteriorate and you feel like, uh, it's getting really tricky and you might want to reach for that bottle or a drink is starting to seem like the only viable answer to whatever's happening in your circumstances, then I want you to think of having an escape hatch. And this can be just what the doctor ordered. So it can be anything from a sudden stomach distress to a wardrobe malfunction. Anything can come in handy and it allows you to retreat and just take that very important break, get a few breaths, walk outside, look at a funny meme on your phone, distract yourself a little bit and just regain your composure. And so that escape hatch can be really powerful and you can stay away for a few minutes until you are feeling solid again and volunteering to do a craft at the kids table or offering to do, do the dishes are also great ways to keep you away from the bar. So those are a couple of ways to navigate with family because things can come up. And so what about a solo holiday? This can be hard for people because we've heard it said that the opposite of addiction is connection. And so if we're feeling isolated or lonely, that can also be a trigger for drinking or thinking that drinking is a good idea. So spending the holidays alone can often have us feeling a little wobbly. And so here's three ways that you can practice to reframe your time alone. So the first one is um, to plan an activity. So in the days immediately following the holiday, plan something to look forward to. A holiday play, a hike with friends, a trip to the ice rink or the ski slopes. And having something fun to anticipate is key. And so while the day might pass where you're not in the gathering, at the gathering, you have something fun that you know is just around the corner. And anticipation is really one of the keys to lasting change, having something to look forward to. And then I like to think of this one as turning FOMO into JOMO. So FOMO, you might be familiar with the acronym fear of missing out into JOMO, the joy of missing out. Like what are the benefits of not having to go to the holiday gathering? Where can you turn the fear of missing out into the joy of missing out? And what are the gifts in spending solo time? Uh, it might look like not having to share the remote or having to eat Cousin Sally's stuffing. 
So find the good in that situation of being alone. And maybe it's an opportunity to take a morning hike and do some reflection and really just spend time, quality time by yourself. Maybe you sleep in, drink some hot chocolate, find something that will create that sense of joy and then volunteer. So if you are alone on the holiday, studies show us that volunteering can really shift our mood and bring a sense of purpose to the day. And then let's talk about when you're the host. So when you are hosting the big gathering, that extra pressure can sometimes create, again, that sense that drinking seems like a good idea or we get overwhelmed, we get depleted. So here's a couple of tips to avoid that scenario. So number one is consider limiting the amount of things you have to do. And I like to call this lower the bar. And perhaps instead of like having to make all the homemade goodies, you just buy the pies or the dessert or have people bring food. And you can assign other food assignments for additional meals if you have people staying over. And then allow the experience to be the focus, not the foods and the drinks. So imagine what you can build into the experience. Perhaps it's uh, people going around the table and reflecting. Perhaps it's sharing a silly story or a special photo. I went to a dinner party once where the most fun thing we did was underneath our plate, there was a little prompt. So before we started uh, our dining experience, we read the little prompt and then we asked each other questions. And it was one of the most fun ways to engage. And it really took the focus on, was the meal perfect? Was there the perfect drinks? How was it that I wasn't drinking? I don't remember any of that because the experience was the most important part. So, you know, think about that. And then also, you know, you can wait and have guests help you move tables after they arrive. Uh, they can set out the silverware, polish the glasses. You can delegate more tasks to make sure that you're conserving energy. Because again, the more depleted we get, the more danger it is that we'll fall into those old patterns. So we really want to keep ourselves from being you know, overwhelmed or feeling too burnt out. And then monitor your own energy goes right along with that. So think of it like a battery. Don't run down to empty before recharging. And you might actually um, have somebody else you know, pour the drinks and get the water pitchers on the table while you take a moment to just walk outside and take a breath. So make sure you're monitoring your own energy. And then let go of perfection. You know, people are really not going to remember if all of the napkins are matching. Most of them are going to remember the stories and the experience. So again, let ourselves off the hook and don't get too caught up in perfection. And then manage our thoughts. Um, I talked about this already, but one of my favorite sayings is where attention goes, energy flows. So be sure and set yourself up for success by imagining and expecting a wonderful time. You can also set an intention for the meal, the day, the event. Ask yourself this very important question. How do I want to feel? How do I want to show up? What memories do I want to create? And then you can craft an intention such as, I'm open to experiencing the highs and lows and allowing myself to take breaks from the drama. That's just one example, but it's powerful to use our very powerful mind to help us create the experience we want to enjoy. And then finally, you know, when it comes to food and drinks, uh, have your own special beverages so you can sort of treat yourself. Maybe you have a special um drink that you want to experiment with, a uh, soda water with a splash of cranberry and a sprig of mint. Do something festive just for you and drink plenty of water and don't wait until the holiday meal to eat. Low blood sugar can bring on cravings and make it harder to stick to your alcohol-free plan. So make sure that you eat some protein and fat well before the holiday meal. Don't let yourself get into that place where your blood sugar drops 
and you're hungry and angry, also known as hangry. And then consider starting a new tradition. If what you've been doing sounds daunting or really unmanageable, or you just don't feel like you have the emotional bandwidth to deal with it, consider starting something new. You might stay home this year. You might host a family game night instead of a fancy dinner. We did that one year and it was one of my favorite um, experiences. We ordered out, I think we got Chinese food and we played games and it was so much fun because it just was a new way to connect. And some of the expectations were you know, we didn't have to meet them because we were experiencing something different together. We were co-creating that new experience. And so uh, allow the new alcohol-free you to do things differently, things that leave you celebrating all season long. So cheers to being you in your alcohol-free holiday season. And if you want more information about you know, our programs here at Alcohol Free Lifestyle. So you don't have to go it alone. Be sure to check out alcoholfreelifestyle.com and connect with us. All right. Cheers to you having an amazing season. Thanks so much for listening. If you'd like to learn more about our stop drinking services, you can go to alcoholfreelifestyle.com. You can follow me on Instagram at, at James Swanick. Our YouTube channel is at alcoholfreelifestyle.com slash YouTube. Or you can send me an email at james at alcoholfreelifestyle.com.